because this is our entrepreneurial support and resources. So once again, uh, this panel is going to be moderated by Ms. Sandra Rentas. And uh, uh, Sandra is uh, the Hispanic Business Development Advisor for the Nevada Small Business Development Center. A native of Puerto Rico and fluent in Spanish and English, her cultural heritage and language skills has made her a trusted business leader in the Latino community. As a bilingual counselor, she advises small business owners and entrepreneurs on how to start, expand, and operate a business. She has assisted dozens of Latino business owners through the Small Business Association, PPP, and EIDL application process. Sandra has a master's degree in economics from the University of Nevada, Reno. And I can say Sandra is a tremendous asset to the state of Nevada. And I really appreciate her moderating this panel. I'm going to turn it over to you, Sandra, to introduce your panelists. Thank you. Thank you so much for a wonderful welcome. And thank you everybody for being here. I'm very happy to moderate this great panel. And so rural Nevada can know about the wonderful resources that our state has. So I wanna start introducing my colleague, Kathy Halbardier. She has 25 years of experience in small business development. She successfully ran her own business operation in the wine industry, taking the product from dirt to bottle, selling her product to a variety of local retailers, including Costco. She has taught the NX level business planning course across rural Nevada. Recently, she was in Carson City teaching the class. I was invited for the graduation and co-instructor the National Boots to Boots Reboot class to veterans. She has earned a bachelor's degree in sociology from California State University, Fullerton, and an MBA from the University of Nevada, Reno. So my guest, my next panel is Michelle Hammond. Nice to meet you, Michelle. Thank you for being here. The, for the Economic Development Officer, Humboldt Development Authority. Michelle began her role at the Humboldt Development Authority in 2022 and also serves as a director of the Nevada 9580 RDA. This position enables her to do what she loves, creating synergy and contributing to the community, region, and state she calls home. Michelle has extensive experience in the nonprofit se sector with grant management, administration, and fundraising. Michelle earned her dual MBA degrees in natural resources and social sciences from Great Basin College, a master to act from Colorado State University and was a 2003 Nevada System Higher Education Board of Regents Scholar. Welcome, Michelle. My next uh, panelist is Jared Prida, Project Manager Nevada from in Nevada Industry Excellence. Jared is a Project man Management from Nevada Industry Excellence, who is the official rep of the Manufacturing Extension Partnership National Network in Nevada. He also serves as Industrial Extension Program for the National Senior System of Higher Education. Gerard has nearly 20 years of experience in logistics and distribution management in the building products and third-party logistics industries. Prior to joining the Nevada Industry Excellence, he led warehousing and distribution teams at ITS Logistics. He has a Bachelor's of Science, Supply Chain Management from the University of Nevada, Reno as well. Thank you for being here, Gerard. And he grew up in rural Nevada as well. So my last guest is Kelly Kelly from SBDC, and she is the Ad Advisor and Executive Director of Fallon Food Hub. Kelly is the Executive Director of the Fallon Food Hub, a nonprofit organization located in rural Nevada. The mission of the Food Hub is to increase opportunities for local agricultural producers through community education around the benefits of eating locally and seasonally, degradation, sales, and distribution of locally grown produce and farm products, and local and regional and state level advocacy and policy work. Additionally, Kelly serves as the Act Advisor for Nevada Small Business Development Center. Kelly is completing a bachelor's degree in organization and project management, serves as the president of Emerge Nevada, is an adult fan of Lego, and is learning to knit and go. Thank you for being here, Kelly, today. So I want to start my this panel with, I want all of you to introduce themselves. I want to start with you, Kathy, and to talk about the organization and what resources do you provide to businesses in rural Nevada? You're muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just got going and forgot to unmute. So <laughs> thank you so much, Sandra, for asking me to be on the 
panel and, and for being a great colleague. We, at the Nevada Small Business Development Center, we're about the one-on-one -on -one counseling. It's free, it's confidential, but it helps us to size up where the client, the, the business, potential business owner or current business owner is in their project development and to help them move it forward, consistently move it forward, make the go, no-go decision. And if we make the go decision, how do we keep them going forward and getting what they need? And if we make the no-go, how do we get them ready down the road that they might be ready to go into business? So I, I think what's unique about our organization is that it's the one-on-one -on -one and it's confidential. So the goal is that the, the potential business business owner or current business owner can be very open about where they're at and what their strengths are and then what their weaknesses are and how we can help them. So I, I believe that's the beauty of it. And oftentimes I've called us the traffic cop that when they come in and we're looking at, okay, maybe they need a little more work in QuickBooks. So let's get them into a QuickBooks class, or maybe they need some more feasibility study, or maybe they need to be with SCORE, our Service Corps of Retired Executives, which is what the acronym means, but it's really a, um, retired executives that have the skills in multiple industries. So we're really trying to get them to build on what their weaknesses are and get them ready for business operations. So. I kind of call us the traffic cops, so in a good way. <laughs> Thanks, Sandra. And we have different offices in the state of Nevada as well, correct? Yes, I'm a, what we would call the road warrior. Um, I have guest host institutions, so might be a chamber in Douglas County. It might be the Adams Hub in Carson City. It might be the chamber in Dayton, but we have been welcomed into all of the rural communities and they provide us locations to offer our services. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So Michelle, uh, please introduce yourself and then mention what resources do you provide to rural Nevada? Thank you um, for including me on this panel. I'm Michelle and I work for um, both the Humboldt Development Authority and as a co-director of our uh, Nevada 9580 Regional Development Authority. And I feel in a sense, I'm kind of representing our economic and regional development authorities across the state in that we all do the same thing for each one of our regions and our communities, and that's connecting people to resources. Mm -hmm. um, not only connecting people to uh, resources as far as, you know, other people that are sitting on these panels and that have already spoke today, um, but connecting, connecting these people to businesses and individuals in the community that might help them with their vision and, and, and getting their business up and running and off the ground. I, I think a key to success in, in small business and in rural Nevada is people connections. You know, it's it's so important to get you out into the community, meeting the people that live here, that work here, that that make that community dynamic. And and I think that uh, myself, as well as um, others that that work in my area of economic development, uh, that's that's our main goal is is to connect people to people, and and help you be successful. And I totally agree with that statement. It definitely is. Your network, your community is that definitely is very important, especially in rural Nevada. So, yes, especially in rural Nevada. Definitely. So thank you. So Gerard, uh, thank you for being here today. Can you introduce yourself and then share what resources do you provide to businesses in rural Nevada? Yes. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, pleasure being here. And uh, guys, I just wanted to tell you, um, as a as a longtime Nevada resident and uh Growing up here in the state, it's it's very rewarding to be able to to serve this this community and to serve rural Nevada in particular. Um, for the last twenty years or so, I was a senior executive with the largest garage door manufacturer in North America. Uh, when I currently own two small businesses, so have some direct uh, connection to the panel and and uh, the insights that they are sharing here, and maybe some experience to lend as well. Uh, right now. I'm a project manager for the Nevada Industry Excellence Team through the University of Nevada. We are the manufacturer's extension representative for the state of Nevada. Our mission is to assist and advance manufacturing in the state by connecting Nevada manufacturers to resources 
connections, trainings, and support that uh, that they seek in order to be successful. Um, in addition, we you know offer a lot of you know, direct knowledge, but we've got a strong bench of consulting partners and support network that uh, were tailored to meet the specific needs of Nevada manufacturing businesses. However, I would say they are not. We are not solely focused on supporting just manufacturers. We would make what make these services and support connections available to business of it, businesses of any kind. And a lot of the uh, connections and um, trainings that we offer are certainly cross uh, cross uh, applicable across different uh, different markets, different spaces, and different industries. So, thank you, Sandra. Thank you. So Kelly, Kelly, thank you for being here today. Uh, if you can introduce yourself and share what resources do you provide to businesses in rural Nevada? <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sandra. Um, that was a, a great introduction and I appreciate being on this panel. Um, so I, I'm housed at the Churchill Entrepreneurial Development Association here in Fallon, Nevada, which is located in Churchill County. Um, we, I'm duplicate a lot of services that Kathy and Michelle and Jared have already talked about, though I work specifically kind of in the agricultural and culinary spaces. So in those sectors, working with small agricultural producers and helping them get started as farmers growing food for people. Uh, in, in Fallon, we also do a lot of direct uh, client support for just new business owners in general with licensure, with business planning, uh, and with strategic planning. So I like to think that I help uh, our clients just have a really solid plan and have identified the pathway forward uh, and then proceed through that pathway with really logical next steps. Um, so thank you for, for having all of us. Oh, thank you. Okay. So, and I think you may uh, answer already this question, but do your programs apply to small businesses across the state or do you have a specific region that you serve? So if you can share if you're limited or if you're willing to expand your the regions in rural Nevada. So I open it to everybody in the panel. So Michelle, maybe let's start with you or Kelly, <laughs> go ahead. Sure, I can start. Um, so I cover Humboldt and Pershing County, but like I said, I have a counterpart in every county across the state. And, and so again, we're everywhere. So just reach out in any community that you're in and, and we can help make connections. Fantastic. Kelly, Kelly, you were, uh-huh. Yeah, so I'm uh, housed in Fallon, like I said, and work with clients in Churchill County, though one of the beauties of the Small Business Development Center is that we have advisors who are experts in a variety of different subject matters. And so, for example, if Kathy had a client who uh, had some concerns or questions or needed some assistance in something that I was uh, a subject matter expert in, she could refer her client to me and I could refer my client to her. So um, we do provide service for specific industries and sectors across the state as well. Okay, great. What about you, Garrett? Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. Oh, I was just going to piggyback on Kelly and say that we are very strong in co-counseling. And so we do look at what our team, we have a, a team of about 10 to 12 different counselors. So, and everybody's got expertise in different areas. So the beauty is that we can co-counsel, as Kelly said, and work together to make the, the dream of the client and get them on that pathway to where whatever direction they need. So that's the beauty, I think, of, of our network. Plus, we're a part of a larger network. So if it's outside of our scope and it's a new industry to the state, we can pull in from our larger network. So connections, as Michelle said, and, and yes. Kelly has said, are huge. And, and that's the beauty of the network that we're part of. Great. So Jared? Yes, uh, Nevada Industry Excellence is a statewide organization. We cover you know, primarily um, Northern and Southern Nevada in the you know, metro areas, but my focus really is expanding that into the rural Northern Nevada uh, market. Um, that said, the Manufacturers Extension Partnership is a national network. So whether a business has a need in, you know, automation, supply chain management, lean manufacturing, if for whatever reason, we don't have the in-house expertise or the local partnership with a consultant, to assist the client, we're able to draw on the national network within the MEP network to assist 
uh, Nevada manufacturers in locating everything from supplier connections to you know resources that may just be outside of our scope. So we're we're quite broad and looking to expand our coverage and in particular the focus on rural Nevada. Fantastic, thank you. So talking about rural entrepreneurship. That is very unique to Nevada. So can you share some of the challenges and opportunities and how your organization is a key support? So I know there are specific challenges and opportunity for rural Nevada. So can you share some of that to the group? So, so maybe we start with you, Kelly, this time. <laughs> Sure. So um, before I was an advisor with the Nevada Small Business Development Center, I was a client and I went through the process of starting my own small business here in Fallon. And one of the things that I discovered is that the pathway to creating a business and to operating that business can be very challenging. And it's not easy to go to just one location on the internet and find out all of the things you need to do. And so that was the point where I, as a client, came to the Small Business Development Center. And in, in that partnership, um, there was a very clear path with steps, step A, step B, step C, so on and so forth through. Um, most of the clients that, that I work with are very small, very new businesses, and we can help them connect with resources. We can help them identify feasible sales channels. Um, you know, sometimes that involves taking their products into the more urban areas. And sometimes that, you know, involves just really building up local support. So uh, I, I would say that the unique challenges of being in rural Nevada have to do with availability of resources, availability of customers, uh, and also if your target market segments are really specific and niche, there might not be enough of the, the, the customers in that particular segment within your immediate vicinity. So it's going to be a question of like looking out to how you can promote your business outside of your immediate area and reach the specific target market that you're looking to capture with your business. Okay, thank you, great. So, Kathy? I think that I echo everything that um, Kelly said, spot on. I think too, that there's a lot of opportunity in rural Nevada to create things that are non-traditional to the state of Nevada. We have Agland, we've brought in the um, breweries, the distilleries, the, the wineries that are growing the raw materials because we have the land to do it, but we don't have the industry support, the suppliers as well as the legislation. So, and, there, and now we're introducing the hemp industry. So a lot of challenges, and I think that's one of the beauties of our Made in Nevada program is to give people an opportunity to see what we can do in Nevada, but then we also have the challenges of how do we support those new industries as they come into the state. So it's a it's the a a, a, a joy and a challenge. So and and I think we're, we 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 work with the challenges, and I think that's part of uh, Kelly, Sandra, myself. We welcome those challenges, just as I'm sure Jared and Michelle experience the same thing. But I think that that's one of the things that rural Nevada has is they have the opportunity to take on new industries. But then our challenge becomes, how do we license those and get them through that process? So um, that's one of the things that I see as a challenge that I've worked in, in in rural Nevada. Great. What about you, Michelle? Challenges and opportunities in rural Nevada? Uh -huh. Well, I kind of see our challenges as our opportunities, really. Okay. Honestly, um, I think in rural Nevada, you know, like Kelly was saying, resources, right? So we're a little bit more limited on our resources if we're looking at the bubble of our individual community. We just have to open that up. We spread our net farther in rural Nevada. Um, I think that's why often we refer to ourselves as not Winnemucca, not Humboldt County, but we re refer to ourselves as rural Nevada. We encompass the, that whole area because we have to spread our, our net wider. And, and so I think that that's an opportunity for us. I think uh, we also have that opportunity of creativity. I think that uh, people that live in our rural areas are very creative day to day. Uh, you figure things out. You know, you're used to having challenges. You know, you go into a restaurant and um, they don't have lettuce for your sandwich, but that's okay. You know, um, we don't worry about no lettuce for the sandwich or no raisins for my oatmeal. 
um, it's not even a, a thought when when somebody uh, you know brings that challenge to to you, I guess, because you're thinking broader, you're thinking bigger. Um, you understand, you have compassion. One of our, our I think, our biggest uh, opportunities here in rural Nevada, again, going back to the connections with people, it's easier, in my opinion, to get things done. Um, you know more people, you know the people to go to, it's easier to access uh, your people resource in rural Nevada. Uh, and I think people are are accommodating, you know, they're they're very accommodating. So I, I think we get things done and that's our that's our biggest opportunity out here. That's our biggest strength is that rural Nevadans know how to get things done. Fantastic. I love your statement about, you know, the challenges for you are opportunities and you know i heard also this te technical technical uh challenges in rural nevada but yes i that's fantastic what about you jared <laughs> well uh, yeah i absolutely love what michelle just said i think that uh rural nevadans you know to a t have to be problem solvers right the, the distance between markets you know it forces people to be creative to be responsive and and to find creative ways you know to solve you know, for different uh, variables, if you will. Um, and I also completely agree with Kelly. Um, access to support is definitely a, a major gap. Um, and when I say support, when I talk about, you know, the kind of technical resources and the business supporting resources that are available in metro areas, simply in most cases, just aren't available in, you know, rural markets. So for instance, if you need a website developed, uh, the chances that you're going to find very capable support organizations that can help you accommodate, you know, the e-commerce market uh, that you're trying to solve for, that's going to be a lot of windshield time connecting back and forth to your, you know, to your partner. And, and you know, it's not just on the marketing and sales front, but, you know, technical resources, whether it be engineering or, um, you know, otherwise, again, probably aren't going to be present. So, Nevadans are, you know, by nature, independent problem solvers and have to be creative in doing so. And that's where I see my organization playing a role. Thank you. Yep. And I'm going to start this question with you, Jara, because, um, you know, currently, you know, supply chain issues are, you know, big, you know, we are battling inflation, shortage of labor. How do you see these challenges affecting businesses in rural Nevada? Well, I think we've always had these challenges in rural Nevada and that it does cost more simply to bring products to those markets. And so the inflated prices that the greater you know, uh, portion of Americans are experiencing right now have been reflected to a lesser extent in Nevada markets simply due to uh, their size and proximity to major hubs. Um, the supply chain challenges and shortage of labor you know, constraints that we're facing right now you know, are probably going to get better, I would say, in the near term. Um, and that said, you know, the broader economic response that uh, that we're seeing, you know, will certainly contract the economy. That's going to have a major impact on rural Nevada businesses, as it will the broader U.S. economic segment. Um, but in general, I don't know that I could point to one specific component to those larger macro trends that would be, you know, in isolation affecting rural Nevadans. It's it's more you know, the spillover effect and that once um, you know, the tide starts rising in metro areas, it's going to spill over and probably stay longer and have a greater impact on those businesses in rural Nevada. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. So Kelly, Kelly, you were... <laughs> Yeah, I think um, when it comes to supply chain, when you talk about impacts to urban communities, it's always going to be a little bit worse in the rurals. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the last the last mile of delivery of water, right? Always presents the most challenges for an agricultural producer, and it's the same with the supply chain. Uh, so clearly, the national supply chain interruptions and issues are impacting rural business owners and rural communities uh, more intensely than folks in the in the urban spaces. That being said, just to piggyback back on what Michelle said earlier about um, these external threats or, or weaknesses also being opportunities. Um, I, I know it's pretty niche, but one thing that we saw with our local agricultural producers during the pandemic was that supply chain interruptions within the agricultural sector presented a huge opportunity for, uh, for small ag producers here. 
um, you know, as, as people were watching national news stories about farmers um, letting crops rot in the fields or having to euthanize animals or dumping out milk, none of that happened with our agricultural producers in Churchill County or in Northern Nevada because we were able to be nimble and to deliver those products to people. Uh, and the competition base virtually vanished um, when, there, when there wasn't availability in larger stores. So I think that's another one of the strengths of um, our rural businesses is that we are able to be lean and to be nimble and to pivot and to take advantage of opportunities in the marketplace. Thank you, fantastic. Michelle? <laughs> Yeah, I love that what Kelly just said. You're exactly right. And I and I preach that I you know, we know how to handle this, you know, don't don't tell us we're in crisis because we'll we'll argue that point. So, um yes, we obviously, you know, uh, are at the end of that supply chain um issue more times than than we'd like to to um dwell on, I guess so to speak. But again, yeah, we we rise to that challenge. And we figure out ways to be creative and work around it for sure. Um, I I see it in my in my region that labor labor shortage is more of an issue um, than anything else. Is you know finding finding people and finding mm -hmm. people that want to work and want to work hard and you know have have that work ethic. We have a lot of those out here in rural Nevada. Um, but as we're growing and we're bringing in new industry. Um, we need more people to fill those jobs. And so I, I think that that labor shortage I see as being the bigger issue on our end is, you know, finding those people, instilling those work ethics and, and making work a place people want to be again. You know, um, I think during the, the pandemic, we saw a lot of people um, kind of re rethinking their values, mm -hmm. their time, you know, how much work they have to do to get by. Um, and so I think that that's a big challenge right now across the board is, is getting people back, back to work and, and instilling those work ethics and, and finding people that want to fill, fill the jobs that we're bringing to our communities. Thank you. Kathy, you want to share something else? I just I want to echo and support everything that everybody said, but I think that what I find in, in the, in our rural communities, it's, it's just that, it's community. And they're, they, when the going gets tough, they get more collaborative, they get more creative, they get more resourceful. In, in all of the communities that Michelle, that Kelly, that Jared serve in, and the communities that I've served in, I just think that that's one of the, the beauties about our, our communities. And we get into shared resources and we become, how can we all rise and make this work and survive? Because we love the communities that we live and work in. So that's really where I see uh, the strength of our rurals. Thank you. And I think, uh, you know, what I'm hearing is rural Nevada has resilience, you know, after COVID and then, wow, well, we have inflation. So, you know, we're resilience is part of a big characteristic of the rural Nevada. And I have one more question and I have, I know we have limited time. So maybe we, you can share with one world, one word. What is one piece of advice that you would like to leave to rural entrepreneurs as they prepare to launch their new businesses, what it will be? So maybe you can share in one or two words so we can finish on time. Let's start with um, Michelle. <laughs> Synergy. Synergy, Synergy, okay. That, that's my uh, message. Get out into the community, meet people, become part of the community, uh, market yourself and your business. Synergy. Fantastic. Jared? I would say know your customer. That means know your market, know the trends, the dynamics that affect it, how your supply base and your resources will respond to you know, setbacks, changes, what contingency plans uh, you have in place to respond to those uh, dynamics. But sorry, more than one word. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Kathy? Stay open, stay flexible. The world is constantly changing. Be open and flexible to, to that change and embrace it. I love it. And Kelly, Kelly? Yeah, um, I would absolutely duplicate knowing your customer, knowing your market and being flexible, but have a plan. <laughs> Think your plan through and, but at the same time, don't be so tied to it that you're not able to pivot and be nimble as the environment around you changes. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It's been an honor to uh, facilitate this panel. And if you want to put your information in the chat, so 
uh, so people can contact you if they have further questions. So thank you so much. I